Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome to Parkitects, a new series of Parkitects where we're going to go into sandbox mode and hopefully make something that looks beautiful. So, um, we're kind of putting the, the Let's Play on hold a little bit of the main series because I, I just kind of felt like I had done it all. I kind of felt like I'd seen a lot now and it did what it was meant to do for me, which was um, uh, really sort of make me figure out the game, figure out some of the pieces, figure out the workflow and all that. Um, and I'm glad I did it because one thing I didn't do with Planet Coaster uh, when we started that was I kind of just dived into sandbox really whilst I was doing the uh, the, the career mode as well and um, and I made a lot of mistakes and stuff and it wasn't really until we sort of did version 2.0 and started with Pinewood Hills that I really sort of figured out what I wanted to do with the game so uh, I didn't want to make the same mistake with Parkitect so we played around with it through the alpha through the beta um, and then we did the uh, the campaign 28 episodes if you're new here and you want to see loads more Parkitect uh, there's 28 episodes of uh, uh, all the way up to Biscayne uh, no, it's Happy Go Harbour I think, about halfway through the Let's Play and I'll probably go back to that at some point and do a few more because I do quite like the goal orientated gameplay in this game um, but I did, I have a lot for a good sort of month now, I've been chomping at the bit to get into a sandbox mode and do something uh, a little bit more creative so if you're new here, first of all, uh, welcome. We do lots of creative simulation style gameplay here. Uh, a lot of theme park stuff, Planet Coaster and Parkitect are very big, but really anything that lets us sort of stre stretch our creative muscles, so to speak, uh, we're really into here. So if you are new, make sure you click subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. Uh, what we're doing today then is starting a full-on sandbox part. We're actually in scenario mode at the moment because m pretty much everything we no yeah no everything we build today isn't even in the park. This is the the setting for the park. Okay, so uh, what I what I wanted to do was do something a little bit different that hasn't been seen much before. Um, I've been watching some really awesome series of this game since it's come out. Uh, Silver, very much like me, has been going through the uh, well, I say very much like me, he's been killing it but he's been doing the uh, the scenarios as well but as far as sandbox parks has been, uh, are concerned, um, there's a really great uh, smaller channel called Coaster B that's well worth going and checking out. Really does some awesome stuff in the game. Uh, obviously, my buddy, my pal, Mass Bandit has been uh, doing Cold Creek Park. I think he's done six uh, starts of that <laughs> sorry I'm, I'm joking Mast uh, he, he started again a few times which is something I did you know what in the early ass of the game because I think you this is one of those games where you really sort of you get a few hours in you're like no I could do this better but I think what he's got now is he's, he's smashing it so Cold Creek Park that's well where oh is it Cold Creek Park or something like that it's Creek Cedar Creek Cedar Creek that sounds right I don't know it's a, it's very much a Six Flags uh sort of American mid-budget park, okay, and that's awesome. Uh, and then also $2.20, somebody you may not have heard of, he's, he's got a really awesome channel, but he plays pretty much exclusively City Skylines until he's moved over to this, so if you're not venturing into City Skylines, um, you may not have heard of him, but he's got an awesome Planet Coaster series where, again, he's really focused on detail, on scale, on uh, on reasoning and stuff, and to be honest with you, he's taken to it like a duck takes to water. This is It's all new for him. Uh, like I say, he's a Cities player, um, didn't... See, even said in one of his videos that he struggled with Planko. So uh, really great to see him, uh, not only go see him in Parkitect, but see him really smash it in Parkitect as well. So his, uh, his park is Dollarwood, uh, obviously being a, a, a pun on his name, but um, it's uh, it's sort of, you know, a, a Dolly, Dollywood sort of, again, Six Flags, Cedar, Cedar Creek, that kind of, Cedar Fair, that kind of um, mid-budget American park. So I wanted to do something a bit different to that. I didn't just want to do another park in the forest, you know, like mid-budget British. I didn't want to do Pinewood Hills in Parkitect, basically. And obviously we have a Zuri Garden with Mass Bandit in, Park, in Planet Coaster where we're doing the huge mega budget so I didn't want to try and tackle like a Disney budget in this because um, one, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of getting my fix of that in Azuri but also I didn't want to sort of overscope myself like I've done a few times in these kind of games I wanted to keep the scales uh, you know, tight for the first uh, series so we can really get something that we can finish so I sat and banged my head against the wall for a little while and, um, and then I saw a vlog from Theme Park Worldwide pop up, Sean, uh, of Black Pleasure Beach and I was like perfect let's do a Pleasure Beach 
uh, because it's very British, it's very individual, and it's something I haven't really seen other people do. Although, although Coast to Be has done a, a bit of a Pleasure Beach series a while ago, um, I thought it'd be a nice, uh, nice sort of thing to try and tackle um, uh, because it comes with its own set of challenges, which is something that I, uh, I really think will be fun to try and uh, to try and do. So Pleasure Beach, if you don't know, uh, Blackpool Pleasure Beach is probably one of the larger theme parks in the UK. Um, not necessarily physically, it's quite a small park, but it stands up there for the ride selection and everything as one of the uh, better parks in the UK. I'd probably put it in the top three behind maybe Alton and Thorpe, probably. Um, it has a great new uh, double launched um, Mac coaster this year, or oh, last year, sorry, called Icon, which is really great. Also has some really classic woodies, uh, Grand National, which is a Mobius strip looping wooden coaster, and, uh, and a few others, Big Dipper, and, and, and um, just some really, you know, classic wooden structures. And it's the, the, the main point of it is it's on a really small footprint, surrounded by houses, and obviously one edge of it is surrounded by a beach, and it's, they just they squeeze as much as they can into it and I just thought it'd be a really quite fun challenge to try and see if we can recreate that here in the uh, in the Let's Play series we got up to Happy Go Harbour I think the next one to do would have been a similar-ish kind of thing but obviously I wanted to try and tackle this without the limitations of the uh, of the career mode uh, on us so hopefully it turns out quite fun and um and we can we can make something that looks pretty good, but uh, like I say, episode one and to an extent episode two. I'm trying I'm batch recording these a little bit, so the first couple are done. But episode one, we don't even touch the park. But episode one is basically the the beach part of the uh, of um, of the pleasure beach because it needs to have its surroundings. Um, reminds me a lot of, I think it was Bumbly Beach in Red Across Tycoon 2, I think, was again, similar sort of setup. Had a had a beach road along one side and then houses around the exterior. And again, very sort of small uh, footprint to work with. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. Uh, but this isn't a recreation of Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It's just a Pleasure Beach. And what other people don't know is that Blackpool is only one Pleasure Beach in the UK. We actually have a few parks that have that uh, nomenclature. Um, Southport, I think I might have been called Pleasure Island or something, but again, small theme park near a, near a seaside. Um, Yarmouth Pleasure Beach, I think, is the other one that has a really uh, old school wooden coast that still has a uh, conductor on the train. It still has a brake brake man. Uh, on the train which is pretty fantastic um, again using both of those a lot of inspiration um, as well as Blackpool itself so this is just a uh, I think I called it Bayport yeah Bayport Pleasure Beach I was trying to think of a name and I was like oh something something watery something bay or something poor so I was like oh just Bayport that'll do Bayport so it's you know I wanted to really get across that this was a British seaside town what I'm doing here is the uh, the hotel uh, hotel strip on the front. So if you've ever been to Blackpool, or if you ever go to like Google Images and have a look at Blackpool, uh, pretty much the entirety of the uh, the city's front strip here uh, is covered in hotels and bed and breakfasts. Uh, the ones along the strip are slightly larger, usually like full-on hotels. The bed and breakfasts are a little bit more set back on the side streets. Um, uh, but here they are, full of hotels, all different shapes and sizes, all different colours, very bright colours often, but quite subdued colours because the sea air attacks the paint like nobody's business. Uh, everything always looks a little bit dated. One, it is a little bit dated, but also just the, the sea air just rips it to shreds. So uh, it wants to keep it all sort of very like pastels and lighter colours um, to kind of get that across. Really enjoyed building these actually, and I have used I know Rudy Renkamel, an also awesome Planet Coaster player who who has played Park Test in the past, but I don't think he's working on anything in there at the minute. Uh, he pulled me up on using copy and paste, but yes, it is copy and paste because this isn't the park. This is purely the setting for, for you know most most uh, park architects uh, or Planco. You know you go in and throwing some trees down around the edge, whereas here we can't have that. It's got to look uh, residential. It's got to look sort of heavy filling in. So I've done about four or five different hotels. Uh, uh, shape wise and then I go in place them all along the front and then change the colors of them up so um, at a passing glance they all look quite different so I'm really quite happy with how they've turned out to be honest with you uh, and again it kind of really really sort of speaks to me this sort of seaside vibe uh, I spend probably a bit too much time in Blackpool to be honest with you Th those those people watching from the UK will know it Blackpool has a bit of a bad rep it's not it, it was kind of left behind in the 80s the, the big problem with Blackpool was it was a, it was a huge um, holiday destination for for people in the 60s and 70s really up and coming loads full of hotels and bars and restaurants and, and, and bed and breakfast and, and obviously the theme park and then they have a huge um, well not huge it's smaller than the the, the um, the parrot the Eiffel Tower but they have a replica of the Eiffel Tower there the Blackpool Tower uh, and then underneath the tower there's aquariums and, 
and all sorts. And, and even still, a lot of the newer stuff there is really good. They have a Two Swords, and uh, which is a Waxworks, and a, and a London and a Dungeons, like the London Dungeons, and, and, the, and the York Dungeons, and all those, Edinburgh Dungeons. Um, a Two Swords. Basically, Two Swords have owned a bit of the town for a while. <laughs> um, and obviously, the Pleasure Beach is really great, really great day out. Um, the big problem with Blackpool was that in the 80s, it became cheap to fly to the continent. Uh, and suddenly uh, the uh, possibility to go to Spain for your holiday uh, became much more affordable and it was really the death of Blackpool to be honest with you and it's struggled ever since to um, to sort of find its space uh, since then so uh, that's kind of one thing I want to try and get across here uh, don't get me wrong it's not an awful um, sob story, you know, it does pretty well. The uh, the Pleasure Beach does really well, and the the other end of Blackpool, the North Pier, where the uh, the tower and all of the uh, two sort of attractions again is really up and coming. They have the Winter Gardens, the beautiful Opera House. Uh, I go every year because there is a convention that I go to there. And in, in, I've mentioned this before in videos, but in uh, in a previous life, I was a magician. Uh, I don't perform anymore, but I still go to a magician's convention every year to see friends and to to you know sort of socialize and, and have fun. Uh, so I spend a weekend in Blackpool every year, and then obviously go to the Pleasure Beach usually once or twice a year um, obviously that'll be stopping soon because we're emigrating to Canada in a month a month at the today as I'm recording this it'll be less than a month by the time the video comes out but yeah a month today we moved to Canada which is crazy um, but yeah I've always had a very uh, soft spot in my heart for Blackpool warts and all and that's something that I really want to try and get across in this series uh, that warts and all it is a little bit ropey a little bit rough around the edges a little bit tired and I think that's going to be something really fun to try and uh, to try and replicate in this game uh, although one thing I do do just because the game lends itself to it a little bit is this is a slightly rosier tinted specs version of Blackpool for instance here we're doing lots of lovely planting and uh, Nicola my wife came over and looked at it and she was like Blackpool wouldn't have all this nice stuff and I was like no no it might not it, you know it might not but I really wanted to try and get a little bit of color into the park and also like I say you know this is this is fantasy this is a little bit sort of dream serving i guess you know we're building in a video game so i did kind of want to do a little bit more uh of, of sort of brighter colors and stuff as i could and also just get to use the parts as well um as far as mods are concerned i'm going to try and keep vanilla with this if i can although i do realize i think next i don't think i place any down in this episode but i did have one mod installed as in what i mean by mod is uh, asset mod sorry i do have a few mods for um uh like prop anarchy and, and, a, and a height placement adjustment and things like that uh, obviously those are I, personally I think really sh should be part of the game especially for the way we build so I'm more than happy to use those as far as assets go though I'm going to try and keep it vanilla although I did realize that I do have a, a bench uh, asset set that I used a couple of times without really clicking on like oh yeah that's a mod and I was going to not use mods so there's a couple of benches but I'm going to keep it light what I'm not going to do is uh, download crazy amounts of custom scenery so we are going to be using the, se the themes that are in the game or or themes that we can make from the themes in the game for instance um there isn't actually i'm quite surprised by it but there isn't actually a pirate theme in the game but between the western and the steampunk and the uh, you know the few at the mark there's some so there's some like mines so there's some chests there's some crates and things and you can you can do a pretty good approximation of a of a uh of a pirate theme so so that's kind of what the theme's going to be really uh, what what are in the game and what we can do from the game so next up we're building some terraced housing this is very common housing in the uk for um for, for lower income families I, I currently live in a terraced house um they're sort of uh, loads of loads of mid-income uh, households mostly uh, city centers have a lot of this uh, very sort of tightly packed housing a house either side sharing exterior walls and um, yeah, very, very common style of housing in the UK and something that uh, Blackpool is full of, to be honest with you. And I really wanted to get that across. So again, a little bit of copy and paste, but that's mostly because these these are pretty much copy and paste, you know, these are, these are very sort of set buildings that all look the same. So here we're building a, uh, a red brick set and a grey bricks, bricks blah, 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 a red brick set and a grey brick set that we can uh, copy and paste in there and then alternate. And then I am going to go over with uh, with a paintbrush and change the colours of every few ones to some creams, some uh, different greys, different reds, and a couple of really bright ones as well. Because you know people 
um, are able to, to paint their house if they want to. And um, often these these sort of style housings, they're council owned and are very often rented from council. Um, and the council will come through every sort of 10, 15, 20 years and do like a rejuvenation project on them, maybe replace windows uh, and do a bit of paint, a uh, bit of sort of siding work and, and, and paint them up and stuff like that. So I wanted to get that across as well. So they don't stay these colours that you're looking at now. Uh, we do sort of vary them up a little bit and I think that sort of mix of of uh, structure and change of colour sort of really adds. So occasionally we'll do a couple of really sort of bright bright colours where people have just gone kind of crazy with them and the, you know, the people who they're a bit wacky, you know, the sort of the people who say, oh I'm mad me, you know, those, that sort of person. Um, but yeah, if you're one of those people then good, you know, you do you. Uh, but here we go, we're changing them around. So yeah, do a little bit of work of this off camera because it's kind of the same sort of thing really. But that is pretty much episode one. Absolutely no theme park at all uh, we do begin a theme park entrance in the next one thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed it if you have you can give us a like it really does help out the channel and like i say if you're not already you like to see lots more creative gaming for grown-ups don't forget to click subscribe any thoughts queries or suggestions please pop them down in the comments thanks very much for watching i'll see you in the next one